Good afternoon everyone. ITEC welcomes all the participants for today's National Distance Learning Seminar Series. Today's topic is National HIV Counseling and Testing Services Guidelines Part 2 and speaker is Mr. Tejas Malik. Mr. Tejas Malik is currently working as Consultant PPTCT with Basic Services Division NACO and has over 5 years of experience in monitoring and evaluation field of NACP at national and sub-national level. He has been critically involved in the PPTCT program management and research activities under National Data Analysis Plan. Mr. Tejas has experience in drawing analysis and evaluation of PPTCT interventions in the state. He has wide experience in conducting the training at state and national level and possesses good analytical skills with proven expertise in data management and data quality analysis. We welcome you Mr. Tejas for today's NDLS session. I request you to kindly take over the session now. Uh, thanks Diveji and uh, welcome to all participants for the NDLS session on SCTS guideline part 2. Uh, this guideline, uh, we have seen the last session uh, which deal with the uh, all basic theories of the guideline. Uh, this session will be dealing with the all annexes quoted in the guideline. I uh, just want to convey the message to all the participants that uh, this session will be more focused on the annexes pertaining to the standalone ICTCs. Uh, we will be having the another session on 25th Jan. Uh, this would be a part 3 uh, and this pertains to the annexes for the FISTCs and the TIICTCs as per the new guideline. So what we are going to see in this session, uh, so we know that uh, as per the new guideline we have uh, uh, bifurcated the annexes part in the five parts uh, that is registers, forms, reports, cards and any other miscellaneous documents. So uh, this session we will learn about the documentation and reporting format pertaining to the confirmatory facilities that is the standalone ICTCs and in the next session uh, which will be uh, conducted on 25th Jan uh, for the screening facilities that is FYCTCs and PPPICTCs as well as the TIICTCs as per the new guideline. So we will see the annexes for the standalone ICTCs. So what are the major changes in the registers for the confirmatory facilities? So we are maintaining the different kind of registers in the standalone ICTCs. So first major change is that uh, we have removed the PID registers. So those two PID registers for the general client and the PID register for the pregnant woman has been removed and the all information has been incorporated in the counseling register itself with that address details and the contact number. Second thing uh, regarding the HIV positive line list register for the general client and the pregnant woman. We are maintaining the general client line list and uh, register for the HIV positive individuals. Uh, these registers has been replaced with the PLHIV card and the PPCT beneficiary card respectively. That means for general HIV positive general individuals we will be maintaining the PLHIV card and for the HIV positive pregnant woman we will be maintaining the PPCT beneficiary card. It's a cascade information being captured in the form of card. It's like a white card. Uh, third thing, we have created the separate register for reporting of the HIV positive deliveries. So earlier this was the part of the counseling register itself, but considering the, the time span of the activities, that means at the time of testing, she is getting tested for HIV and referred for the yard center, but she will be delivering after 5 months, 6 months, so it depends. So to capture those the different activities, we try to uh, segregate the registers between <coughs> counseling register and the HIV positive delivery register. So this register will use to document the HIV positive deliveries which are happening in the higher level hospitals. Those cases might be detected in the other lower level hospitals but uh, getting delivered in the district level hospital medical colleges. To document all those HIV positive deliveries this register will be helpful. Uh, then also we try to standardize the uh, outreach activity register which is being maintained by the ICTCs but which was not in the uh, standardized form. So we tried to standardize that form. Also we tried to standardize the visitors registers. So whoever is visiting from the national level, state level or from the DAPCO level for the supervisory visit to the ICTCs. So all those observations and action points will be noted down in the visitors registers. So we will see the register for the standalone ICTCs. 
So with the new guideline, we are calling those standalone HTC as the confirmatory facilities, who is doing the confirmation of the HIV testing. So the first register is the counseling register for the general individuals. Then second is the counseling register for the pregnant women. Then third one is the HIV positive delivery registers. So all HIV positive deliveries will be reported in that register. Then ICTC HIV expose infant child register, which is there already. Those EID centers who are maintaining the uh, EIC3 register. Then HIV TB collaborative activity register, which is the antigen number A9. Then HIV TB line list. Uh, this would not be printed from the SAC side. Uh, it will be a soft copy of the line list in the Excel form and will be shared with the uh, concerning RNTCB team at the state level, at the facility level. Uh, then outreach activity register and the visitors register. Uh, this pertain to the uh, counselors and the regarding lab part, lab technician is going to maintain these three registers that is laboratory register which is already there, stock register and temperature logbook. Then, so as I told you, we have replaced the uh, line list registers with the cards. That means general client line list register will be replaced by the PLHIV card for the general individuals, which is the annex D1 in the guideline. Then PPCT beneficiary line list. Then uh, PPCT line list will be replaced by the PPCT beneficiary card. Then EIC3, EIC card, which is already there in the EID centers. Uh, then we have added two different cards that is discordant partner card considering the importance of uh, tracking the spouses of the discordant couples uh, we, we are going to maintain the discordant partner card so with that card we will be ensuring the same PID for the client whenever he is coming by the follow up testing and follow up HIV testing card for obviously for those cases like HRGs we are doing the testing of HRGs twice in a year. So this follow-up follow -up testing card will be given to the HRG whenever he is coming back for the follow-up HIV testing, he will be carrying that card along with the PID mentioned on that card. So that the same PID will be maintained in the follow-up testing. Then forms. So there are, uh, we are maintaining the linkages form, so which is in the triplicate. So uh, linkages from ICTC to ART, ICTC to STI, ICTC to RNTCP, the same common form will be used. Uh, then indent form, so whenever you are indenting for the kits in other consumables, uh, you need to indent document properly with the suggested format. Then third is the RNTCP form for referral of diagnosis. So uh, we will go into discuss that card separately, that uh, form separately. Then uh, we are also going to discuss the reporting format for the standalone STCs. So as per the new guideline, we have tried to simplify the SIMS format, ICTC format. We have seen the frequent changes in the SIMS format. But as per the new guideline, we tried to minimize the complications in the format and simplify it with the uh, newer version. So earlier we have another uh, about 1000 sales in the ICTC format. We tried to reduce it to the 4000 sales in the ICTC format. Uh, we have separately created the SIMS quarterly report format uh, to document the equas activities, then uh, social benefit schemes provided to the individuals. We also created the dashboard indicators. That dashboard will be displayed at the ICTC center and it will be updated, uh, updated for every month. So whatever the activity or whatever the database is available at the ICTC, for every month that dashboard will be updated by the ICTC and it will be displayed in the ICTC. So whenever anybody is visiting to the ICTC, uh, they will be getting to know the status of the uh, data about that ICTC. Uh, then uh, regarding lab technician, uh, we have created the laboratory report and daily worksheet. So laboratory report exactly it's a uh, HIV test report which is being handed over to the patient and the daily worksheet for the laboratory technician. Uh, we have also quoted the uh, different annexures like uh, EMOUs for the PPP, ICTCs, DO letters signed by the AS and MD NHM and the ASD Jinaku for universal screening, like a rubber stamp prototype for the facilities, supervisory checklist for the facilities, integrated 10 points tool. All those annexures are has been 
uh, quoted down in the new guideline. You can refer those annexes uh, in detail while referring the HIV testing guideline. So uh, this is in short about the standalone STC uh, registers and the formats to be maintained at the standalone STC. Uh, this part two, uh, part three, uh, what I told you that uh, we are going to have the session on uh, formats for the FI STC. Uh, this will be conducted on the 25th Jan. So we will quickly move to the uh, formats of the standalone STCs. Okay. So I'll be sharing the screen, uh, Pravinji. Uh, please share the screen. So we will discuss the each and every register format. Screen share. Uh, we will discuss the uh, registers format uh, in detail. Okay. Hope everybody can see this folder. So now we will discuss the registers for the standalone ISTCs. So counseling register for the general individuals, which is the anager two in the guideline. Okay. This is the anager 2 counseling register for the general individuals. We are not going to discuss each and every indicator in detail, but surely we will focus on those indicators which are newly incorporated and which needs to focus on. So we have highlighted some of those indicators. So first thing is uh, date of visit and then we are asking whether the, uh, we know that there is a duplication happening in the field for the HIV testing. So whenever any client reaching to the ICTC, we need to ask the question whether that client has been tested before or not. If it is tested before, then we need to mention the PID which was assigned by the first ICTC. If the PID is not available, if not tested, then we will assign the new PID of our ICTC and we will follow that client for the further services. Then obviously all other indicators, name, address, contact number, we have incorporated Aadhaar number in the newer register, new registers. So we need to ensure the documentation of the Aadhaar number for future services to track the duplication. Also type of individual. So type of individual we know. So course and specifications of those each indicator is given at the downspace of the page. So you can refer the course of the each indicator. So type of individual is the whether it is a self initiated or the provider initiated. With the newer guideline earlier terminology was a client initiated which is replaced uh, with self initiated so we are not going to use word client instead we are going to use the word individual so client initiated individual will be uh, referred as a self initiated individual so if that client is a self initiated we need to mention the source of information regarding the hiv testing so from which he got the source for the hiv testing then in referral so all those indicators which were there in the existing formats type of risk behavior, age, sex, education, occupation, marital status, ha. consent. The major change in the uh, format is that uh, we are going to take the consent in the counseling register itself. We will not be having the separate uh, counseling uh, consent form. Instead, we are going to take the signature of the individual as a consent in the register itself. So it will reduce the extra burden of the maintaining the different different forms. Date of testing, test report, date of post-test counseling, these are the indicators, indicators which are, were there in the existing register format. Pre-IT number, <coughs> all other indicators are there. Uh -huh. Additionally, uh, result of the TB test, whether tested for TB, if it is yes, then result of the TB test, whether TB detected, not detected. Then we have added the spouse testing details. The first question is whether spouse of HIV positive individual partner, sorry, status of the spouse is known or not. If it is known, then you need to write the date of testing. If it is not known, 
then you have to test that spouse and assign the new PID and write the HIV status. Uh, in the new guideline, we also focused on the couple counseling. So that has been discussed in the previous session. So if couple counseling is provided, you need, you need, you need to mention the details. Uh, we are also going to follow the discordant couples with the discordant card. So here we need to mention if there is any discordant found in the HIV positive individuals, then we need to mention the date of next follow up. So you can mention over here. Okay, so this is all about the counseling register for the general individuals. Now we will see the counseling register for pregnant women. Okay, so uh, this is the counseling register for the pregnant woman. So same indicators whether tested for HIV before this visit. If it is tested, then yes, then write the previous PID. If it is not tested, then assign new PID and do HIV testing. So all other indicators are same name, address, contact number, Aadhaar number. Here for pregnant woman, we are going to ask the EMCTS number, mother child tracking system number, which is being given by the NHM. So you can note down it from the ANC card. So referred by, so in referral from you have to write age, education, occupation, all those common indicators. Month of pregnancy. You need to write the month of pregnancy in the completed month. Gravida, then whether opted for MTP or abortion. <coughs> Obviously consent we are going to take in the register itself as I told you for the previous register. Huh. And then uh, indicator number 24. Uh, we should know what is the new case and known case. We have already incorporated that uh, indicator regarding known positive cases in the SIMS format two years back. So everybody might be aware of that indicator. So new cases are those cases who are detected in your ICTC for the current pregnancy. And known positive cases are those cases who are detected earlier, maybe from your ICTC or maybe from other ICTC, but taking ANC services for current pregnancy in your ICTC. So you need to maintain those cases as a known positive cases. Then type of individual that is ANC, DIL and breastfeeding woman. Earlier we were maintaining only ANC and DIL cases but uh, with the revised changes we are going to take the we are going to report those cases who are coming late postnatal or in the during the breastfeeding period, lactating period. So all those cases detected during breastfeeding period will be reported in the counseling register. Also we have provided the uh, reporting uh, format for those cases in the uh, section D format itself. Uh, then also we are doing the syphilis testing for the pregnant woman. So we need to mention the syphilis testing. They are tested for syphilis and result of the syphilis test. Same for the TB. If screened for TB and tested for TB then result of the TB test. Uh, spouse testing details as like a general client register we need to mention then couple counseling provided then you need to mention that if any discord on found uh, you need to report the date of follow-up testing so this is for the pregnant woman counseling register if you have any queries related to the uh, uh, code and specification you can refer the table given below at the each format Well, we are moving little fast because we need to discuss the SIMS format. Uh, okay, uh, then uh, this is a new register, HIV positive delivery register, which is the Annex A1 in the guideline. So, what is there in the 
manager A11, which is a HIV positive pregnant woman delivery register for the confirmatory facilities. So obviously we are going to maintain the PID of that case, name, address, contact number, then place of delivery. For the place of delivery, see the code and specifications, specifications and codes. So whether delivery is occurred in the same hospital or any other government hospital which is not an FISTC or other any private hospital which is not an FISTC or the home delivery occurred. So you need to mention the code where the delivery occurred. Then place of HCTS confirmatory facility. So whether she was tested in your ISTC or any other ISTC. So you need to mention that. That is tested in the same facility or tested in the other facility because most of the cases are uh, coming for the delivery in the higher hospital only. Those cases were already been tested in lower level hospital but getting delivered in the uh, district level hospital or the medical college level hospital. And then data patch confirmation whether registered at the ART center, EPS then write the pre IT number. Date of pre-IT initiation, ART arrangement initiated to mother. So all this information will be available with the ART center. You can take it from the ART center for updation. <coughs> then outcome of pregnancy. So date of delivery. Then date of outcome of pregnancy, whether it is MTB, stillbirth, live birth, or abortion. Then type of delivery, whether it is a, it is a cesarean or the normal delivery. Then we need to mention the preferred breastfeeding practices. So we know that as per the new guideline, uh, the baby's prophylaxis will be decided based on the mother's HIV status and her uh, duration of ART. Also her breastfeeding practices <coughs> because the duration of the baby's ART prophylaxis will be depend on the feeding practices as well as duration of mother's ART. So we need to mention the preferred, uh, preferred feeding practice, whether it is an exclusive breastfeeding or exclusive replacement feeding. Then Gravida, also we need to mention the whether exposed to, exposed to the single dose nevirapine in the previous pregnancy. If she is taking this uh, pregnancy, uh, second multiple pregnancy, then we need to mention the history. Then type of HIV infection also to be mentioned, whether it is at HIV 1 or HIV 2 or HIV, both HIV 1 and 2. Because based on the type of infection, uh, baby's prophylaxis will be decided. If mother is having HIV 2 infection, then baby will be given uh, Judovidian prophylaxis. All other indicators are okay. Uh, details of the prophylaxis initiated for baby. So for the details of the prophylaxis you can refer over here indicator number 22 which is referring to the Nevirapin syrup or Judovidian syrup or the Ropinavir. Note that Lopinavir will be given in those cases when Judovidin is not available and which will be initiated after 14 days only, not before 14 days of the delivery. So this is about the HA positive delivery register. Uh, note that this register will ease to document the all HA positive deliveries. Those cases who are detected in your ISTC and getting delivered in the your ISTC only or for those cases who are detected in the other ISTC and getting delivered in the your ISTC. So all those services will be documented in the HA positive delivery register. So it will help to uh, report in SIMS also. Then uh, EIC 3 register. Uh, this was maintained by the EID centers earlier only. But as per the new guideline, all standalone ISTCs, all standalone ISTCs will be an EID center. So they will be doing the EID testing. That training is happening for all lab technicians and the counselors. So soon all the standalone ISTCs will be functioning as a EID center also. So they have to maintain this uh, EID register. So name of the infant, PID of the infant, whenever baby is coming for the uh, PCR testing, we need to mention the PID and the DNA code also. Six of the baby, date, mother's PID, type of delivery, then ARU prophylaxis for the baby. So you can refer the ARU prophylaxis administered. So no prophylaxis, six weeks never happen syrup, 12 weeks never happen syrup, six weeks AZT, that means Jadovidin, 12 weeks AZT, that is Jadovidin, six weeks lopinavir syrup and 12 weeks lopinavir syrup. So whichever the prophylaxis is initiated for baby depending on the criteria you need to mention over here. 
then date of CPT initiated. So whenever baby is reaching to the ICTC for the AI testing, we are going to initiate the CPT. Also, we are going to do the DNA PCR testing. Details of counseling. So all the types of counseling has been listed over here in the indicator number 12. You can refer over here indicator number 12. So details of the counseling. So whatever the counseling part you have done, you can tick mark. You can mention the code A, B, C, D, E. Then, so if it is the first visit, then you need to mention the date of visit. So age of the baby at the time of visit, then infant feeding practices, whether it is an exclusive uh, breastfeeding or exclusive replacement feeding, then type of test, whether it is a DBS or antibody. So EID algorithm we have seen, we have seen the EID algorithm. So the first visit we need to mention all the details and the type of test conducted and the result of the test. So we know that uh, when DBS testing is done, you are going to receive the result after 15 days. Minimum 15 days will be required to receive the results. So whatever the result is there, we need to mention. When baby is coming for the second visit, if the in the first visit baby is negative for any of the tests, then we are going to ask for the follow up visit, probably in the six month at the age of six months. Then again, you need to mention the same indicators, date of visit, age of the baby at the time of visit, at the time of uh, infant feeding practices at the time of visit, then type of test conducted. So after six months, we are going to do the antibody testing first. If antibody is positive, then we are going to have the DBS testing, then confirmation by the second DBS. So all those protocols, you know well. Uh, same for the visit three. Visit three will be reported when? baby is negative for the second visit then again coming for the follow-up visit maybe at the 12 month or after the stopping of breastfeeding also okay uh, please focus on those yellow highlighted cells if baby is found positive with any of this visit any of this visit then we need to collect the confirmatory dbs if the confirmatory dbs is positive baby is confirmed positive if the confirmatory dbs is negative that means discordant then we need to have the second confirmatory DBS. Is it okay? Yeah. And whatever the result of the second confirmatory DBS will be a final result for the baby. Okay. Then confirmatory antibody testing at the time of 18 months. So all those babies uh, undergone the year testing will be finally tested for 18 months. And whatever the result is there, uh, the status will be decided. Then pre it number you need to write EIT regimen initiated. That also need to be documented. If if death is occurred, then you need to mention that also. And date of death also. So in the same column, you need to mention the date and date of death. Okay. So this is all about the EIC three registers, which is a HIV exposed infant child register to be maintained by all standardized diseases. Okay, then we will see HIV TB collaborative activity register. So there is no change in the HIV TB collaborative activity register except uh, addition of that DRTB part. So we have added the drug resistance TB documentation. So we need to maintain the same also. So date of refer to the RNTCP for the TB or DRTB diagnosis, then result of the investigation. So those indicators were there already. We have added only uh, DRTB or RIP resistant TB. Uh, all those remaining indicators are same except that drug resistant TB. No more change in the HIV TB collaborative activity register. So we need not to discuss more over on that. Uh, HIV TB line list, as I told you, uh, this will not be kept in the line. This will not be kept in the register form. It will be a soft copy and will be maintained in the line list form, and it will be shared with the STS and STLS during the monthly review meeting. So, uh, no register format will be shared for that. This will be a soft copy. So, no more change in the line list form. Also, only addition of DRTB.
next then outreach activity registers okay so counselor is doing the outreach activity every saturday so he need to document he or she need to document all those outreach activities carried out in the proper format so register will be provided by sax for the outreach activity registers so you need to mention the date of visit place of visit purpose of visit and the outcome of visit and the signature of the in charge Uh, we have given this table this table will be printed in the first page of the register this table displayed in the screen so what it is see we are going to increase the screening facilities more and more so that means fstcs will be increased in future so each istc will be linked with the uh, 56 fstc so fstc will be uh, standalone istc will be act as a nodal istc for those screening facilities and they will be monitoring their uh, documentation their kit supply and then their testing procedure as well so uh, in the outreach activity register istc need to maintain in the month of april how many screening facilities linked with your standalone istc it could be a yap istc it could be a app istc also or it could be some ti's also depend on the geographical coverage so if it is a fstc you need to mention whether it is a psc or mobile fstc or dmc or dsrc wherever it is located if it is a ppp you need to mention whether that ppp is a corporate hospital or private hospital private medical college or nursing home if it is a psu public sector unit then you need to mention that also if it is a ti ictc so how many ti ictcs are been linked to your standalone ictc for the monitoring and any other facility if it is there so this will be filled for every month in your register itself so it is a so it will ensure the physical linkages between the confirmatory facility and the screening facility okay this is all about the outreach activity register so that outreach activity be, will be maintained in the outreach activity register uh, then visitors register so same name of the visiting official whoever is visiting he need to mention his name and organization and the contact number then issues and observations during visit and the action points and the recommendations suggested then signature of the uh, signature of the visiting official as well as signature of the in charge need to be documented so this is about the visitors registers then lab register which will be maintained by the lab technician so no more changes in the lab registers except we have added the test kit name so whenever you are maintaining the lab register for each on each page you need to mention the kit of uh, sorry name of the kit which kit you are using okay test kit 1 test kit 2 test kit 3 here we also incorporated indicator regarding the type of hiv infection i think it was not there in the existing lab register but with the revised format we have added the type of hiv infection so lab technician need to mention whether it is hiv1 or hiv2 or both hiv1 and 2 that to be documented then controls used uh, then quality controls that means sent to srl equa sample sent to srl that need to mention then confirmatory results from the srl whether it is a concordant or the discordant so we have seen we have the good kind of uh, equa system and no more discordant been found in the equa testing well so this is all about laboratory register then stock register so same uh, no more changes in the stock register except so we need to mention date daily you have to maintain the stock register batch number expiry date opening stock then item received from sax then relocated out if it is located to any ictc any other ictc you need to mention then consumption during that day wastage if any if any kit expired and the closing stock and the signature every day so this is all about the stock register for the lab technician hope 
hope uh, everybody is clear with all those formats if you have any query please write in the uh, comment box well then last is a temperature logbook same all the stc lab technicians are maintaining the temperature logbook it should be in the proper format and properly maintained and the documented in the register so so lab technician need to monitor the temperature logbook twice a daily so in the morning and the evening so no more changes in the uh, temperature logbook format one question from the ictc chikmangalur uh, regarding the uh, i think pregnant woman register we will check that register again pregnant woman register ha huh. so ictc chikmangalur is saying that uh, column number 25 which is a type of individual instead of breastfeeding we should use pnc actually uh, pnc is having the limited period that means postnatal case will be called till 6 weeks only after delivery Uh, till 6 weeks that case 42 days that means 42 days only she will be called as a postnatal case after postnatal uh, 42 day 2 uh, days she will not be a postnatal case she will be a breastfeeding woman or lactating woman so to capture all those cases instead of uh, stating pnc uh, we reported it as a breastfeeding case the question from ictc chikmangalur again visit uh, number 2 and 3 regarding hiv exposed child register hiv exposed eic3 register so they are saying that uh, i think the question is not clear properly so we will discuss it later then again question from chikmangalur what should be entered for the control column in the lab register so we know that we are using the control whenever we are opening the new kit then then you need to mention that whatever the control is used we need to mention then so we have finished with the uh, registers part of the standard stc then we will see the cars so as i discussed with you uh, line list registers has been replaced with the plhiv car and the ppcd beneficiary car so we will discuss about the plhiv car which will be maintained for the general hiv positive general individuals so so all the information of hiv positive individuals will be reported in the cascade form in the card itself so <coughs> the pid number and the prit number will be reported at the top of the page only then name sex aadhar number all other information see uh, card is easy to document than the register because most of the indicators you need to tick mark itself only you need not to write manually you need to mention the name and education occupation all those things manually so it is easy to maintain rather than maintaining the line list register because we know that the printing of the register is a hard task for the sax and most of the time it is always delayed from the sax side so it is better to have the uh, documentation in the card form which is easy to maintain and easy to document also so whenever any case found positive just uh, report all those details of those hiv positive cases in the plhiv card and the ppcd beneficiary card so hiv testing details referral details where it is referred we need to mention then tb testing details whether symptomatically screened for tb based on four symptoms yes no if it is yes then whether tested for tb if it is tested for tb then result of tb test and the started on att if it is positive same for the syphilis testing whether tested for syphilis yes no if it is positive then whether treated for syphilis yes or no 
uh, we need to focus on the address part, documentary, contact part because we need to have the present address and the permanent address because it will ease to follow the cases in future. So if there is any LFU or loss to follow up case, you can easily track with the address details and the contact details. So do collect the information pertaining to the present address and the permanent address properly so that in future you will not be facing the issues. Note that uh, in the address details you need to mention the state name and the district name of that individual. State name, district name and block name because this is very important for the program to monitor the epidemic geographic wise geography wise so based on the state name and district name you can identify the number of cases from particular area number of positive cases from the particular area okay uh, then spouse testing details as I told you all those indicators are same like the register itself so it is uh, maintained in the card form only with the spouse partner tested APS then you need to mention date of testing HIV status PID number if it is positive then you need to mention the PID number of the spouse as well also you need to mention the details of the facility where spouse was tested because it is not necessary that spouse is tested in your ICTC also he or she may be tested in other ICTC also, so you can document that also. Then also need to mention the demographic details of the spouse. So his name, age, other number, mobile number, education, occupation, so you need to mention. We also incorporated the documentation of the family planning measures being adopted by the couples. So what are the family planning measures are adopted by the female partner and the male partner. So for the female partner, in the temporary measures, you can see the female condom, PPICD, copper T, oral, OCP, then traditional methods, whatever the traditional methods are there. And the, in the permanent measures, it is a tubectomy laparoscopy. <coughs> For the male partner, uh, we have the uh, temporary measures as a male condom and permanent measure as a no scalpel vasectomy in SV. If no family planning measure is uh, adopted, then you can tick mark no FP measure adopted. You can click over here also. Then we also ensure the documentation for the social benefit scheme available to the HIV positive individuals. So there are different uh, number of schemes being available by the different states. So we have documented some major schemes which are commonly adopted by the all states. So you can uh, refer to cases over here and uh, mention the social benefit scheme provided to them that like ICDS Integrated Child Development Services, then Swan Jayanti Gram Swaraji. Swarga Rejna, then Indira Gandhi National Pension Scheme, Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme. So all those schemes you can refer and mention the social benefit scheme provided to the individual. Uh, we also going to document the death of the individual. If client death is occurred, then you need to mention the client death and the date of death. Also, if partner's death is occurred, then you need to mention that also. If any remarks also you want to mention, then you can mention any remarks also. So this is all about the PLHIV card, which is to be maintained by the standard ICTCs for all HIV positive individuals, excluding pregnant women. For pregnant women, we are having PPCT beneficiary card. For HIV positive pregnant women, we are going to maintain the PPCT beneficiary card. So same indicators, uh, most of the indicators pertaining to the pregnancy, registration and the delivery. So we can see one by one. The first question is whether type of case, type of case, whether it is a newly detected HIV positive case or the already known HIV positive case. So as I told you, we are very clear with these two terminologies, newly detected case and the already known HIV positive case. <coughs> Name of the individual, order of pregnancy, age, education, occupation, marital status, we need to mention, just need to tick bar. It will ease the documentation properly and will minimize the errors also, errors in the documentation also. And this will help to uh, enter the data in PALS also. Just carry that particular card and update the information looking at the card only. Then pregnancy related information you can mention over here, type of case, whether ANC, DIL or PNC. Yeah, 
we are going to change this PNC as a breastfeeding woman because as I told you regarding the registers we are going to change the PNC as a breastfeeding woman <coughs> then date of visit LMP date so date of first visit to ICTC during current pregnancy if it is a known positive case date of age session you need to mention the date of age session for the current pregnancy then also date of visit to the first IC, to visit to the ICTC during current pregnancy LMP date obviously you will get it from the ANC card so once you enter the LMP date you can use it uh, you can be able to calculate the gestational age in weeks and based on the LMP date you can calculate the EDD if you enter the data in same uh, pulse pulse is automatically calculating the gestational age and the ED date if you mention the date properly LMP date properly HIV counseling and testing details so date of confirmatory test date of post test counseling type of HIV infection so you need to mention the type of HIV infection because based on the type of HIV infection of mother baby's prophylaxis will be decided if mother is having HIV 2 infection or both HIV 1 2 infection we are going to provide the judoidin prophylaxis for baby then route of transmission Huh. If it is already known HIV positive case, then you need to mention the whether she was detected as a general client or pregnant woman earlier. Then uh, I, name of the ICTC where she was detected. So based on this information, system will generate the PID for that case. Okay. Same details for the TB testing and the syphilis testing as like a general individuals, present address and the permanent address. Then referral details, the cases referred to which ART center you need to mention over here then uh, pre it number cd4 test cd4 count on it date on it number and the regime initiated these are the common indicators being maintained by the ait center you can take it from them same details regarding spouse as we discussed for the general individuals we are not going to discuss in detail for those so surely but we will focus on the huh. so this is the addition we are going to take the history about the previous pregnancy also so children born to the children born to this ANC or DIL PNC woman from previous pregnancy for this case if she is having multiple pregnancy so we need to ask about the previous babies babies from the previous pregnancies so number of living children excluding current pregnancy number of living children tested for HIV out of those are living then number of living children detected HIV positive and number of living children initiated on ART so all those information we need to capture just in numbers to ensure the services for all those babies we are not going to ask the details of those babies in detail but surely we will ask the numbers and we will ask them to ensure the services for all those cases then delivery details of the current pregnancy EDD obviously it is there already so we again for the referral reference purpose we have kept here also the outcome of pregnancy date of outcome of pregnancy mode of delivery place where delivery occurred government health facility private health facility or the home delivery and the state or district where that delivery is occurred we need to mention that if it is occurred in the your facility only then you need to mention the state name district name and the block name of your facility then also you need to mention the duration of mother initiated on ERT this will be calculated and it should be during pregnancy that means during pregnancy how much ERT has been taken by the mother so that duration you need to write in weeks so based on the duration of mother baby's prophylaxis will be duration of baby's prophylaxis will be decided if it is less than 24 weeks and if she is breastfeeding then we will extend the prophylaxis for baby to 12 weeks same family planning measures adopted by the pregnant woman and her spouse first yeah so Regarding EID details, we are maintaining the EID details of the child also in the cascade form. So we need to mention the baby name, PID number, DNA PCR code, then first follow-up details. So date of first visit, age of the baby, weight, current feeding practices, type of test, whether it is a HIV-1 PCR test. Uh, note that uh, we are not going to use the term DBS, DNA PCR test. We are going to use the term as a HIV-1 PCR test in future. So, refer DNA PCR test as a HIV-1 PCR test. Huh. Note that 
if the baby is tested for dbs if it is positive then uh, we need to write the confirmatory details available at the down of the page here confirmatory hi1 pcr details suppose if baby is tested for antibody in the first visit because if baby's age is more than 6 month and if baby is tested for antibody and if it is positive then you need to mention the uh, details about the dbs test that means after antibody is positive we are sending the dbs sample first dbs sample those details will be maintained over here if that dbs is positive then confirmatory dbs details will be mentioned in the table available at the end of the page if the confirmatory dbs is positive baby is confirmed positive if confirmatory dbs is negative then you need to mention the second confirmatory that means result of the discordant test so based on the second confirmatory dbs baby's hiv status will be decided okay so same thing for social protection schemes over here as like uh, uh, plhiv card so you need to mention that also and regarding date details you need to mention if baby's date occurred you need to mention date of death and the details yeah so this is all about the pa ppc city beneficiary card to be maintained for the hiv positive pregnant women so now uh, we will see uh, discordant partner card so whenever you found discordant couples so you need to mention the details for the discordant partner so that based on that discordant card you can uh, keep that spouse negative life long so you need to so you just go through those indicators we are not going to discuss those indicators in detail over here considering the time constraint but surely uh, if you refer the guideline you will find the indicators which are easy to understand so in this uh, discordant couple card i just want to discuss with you you need to mention the date of follow up test and the result of the follow up test so initially we are going to test after 3 months and for every if it is negative in the at 3 months then for every 6 month we are going to repeat the test for the discordant partner so until he is ne uh, negative he will be tested again and again once he is found positive then will be linked to the art for the uh, treatment services okay follow up hiv testing card uh, this follow up hiv testing card will be handed over to the discordant partner also if you can read this card will be given in hand to the discordant partner as well as high risk individual like fsw msm idus who are getting tested twice in a year so they can carry this card whenever they are coming back for the follow up hiv testing they can come with the card so that we can maintain the same pid we can ensure the same pid in the follow up hiv testing this will ease the documentation in the counseling register also all right uh, then forms uh, linkages form is in triplicate which is already there this is a common form we have prepared so standardized refer from standardized tc to art or standardized tc to rntcp standardized tc to ti so this form can be used by any facility this can be used by sta facility also they can use this form and refer the client to the ictc they can use this form and refer the client to the rntcp for the tb screening so to and fro referral is possible with this triplicate referral form this triplicate one copy will be maintained by the referring facility another by the referred facility and the third one with the individual that means you can note over here to be filled by the facility referring the individual then second one to be filled by the facility referring the individual this will be filled by them only and to be filled by the referring individual only okay indent form is okay which is common so whenever you are indenting for any kit or any uh, consumables so you need to mention proper documentation so details of the item date and the quantity to be issued then you need to mention the average monthly consumption so that uh, supply can be ensured properly so balance available quantity requested and quantity supply so we, so you need to have this indent form signed by the 
in charge of the BST, in charge of the facility also. So you can go through it and have a look for the understanding. So this can be maintained by standard STC, FI STC, PPP STC, TI STC. When, whenever they are indenting for the any kit or any consumable, they should come up with this indent form. Then RNTCP referral form. Uh, this will pro be provided by the RNTCP unit only. Whenever you are referring the client, you should refer this. Uh, you should mention the details of the patient over here in the first table and refer that client along with this RNTCP referral form. I'm not going to discuss this form in detail. Okay. Now the important is uh, reports. Sims reports. Now we have uh, 10, 15 minutes. Well. <coughs> So annexure C1 in the guideline is about SIMS ISTC monthly report format for standalone ISTC. So uh, we have tried to simplify the SIMS format for standalone ISTCs. Earlier we have seen the complications in the format, too many information is being asked in the format. So with the newer guideline we tried to reduce the number of data entry sales. You can see over here earlier we were asking the bifurcation of the client initiated and provider initiated with sex wise bifurcation for all indicators but with the newer uh, format we try to uh, keep it minimum we are asking the bifurcation only sex wise only that means male female and tg for each indicator if we want the information for the individuals whether it is a self initiated or the provider initiated we have incorporated indicator in the row itself so we will go through each and every indicator properly so the first indicator is okay number pretest counseled male female tg then see note that the highlighted sales are the auto generated sales which will be generated automatically from the age, age wise table it is already automatically generating in existing format also whenever you are entering the age wise distribution your testing and tested and positive number is automatically coming over here so same formula will be applied over here so highlighted sales are the auto generated sales so we will discuss the additional indicator only like uh, we are asking about the number of HIV positive individuals indicator number 5.1 having type 2 infection that means HIV 2 infection number of individuals having the both HIV 1 and 2 infection that is mixed infection then HIV 1 infection will be automatically calculated okay as I told you, we are going to use the word self initiated instead of client initiated. We are going to use self initiated. So you need to mention how many self initiated individuals, male, female, and TG tested for HIV. Out of them, how many found positive? Once you enter this information, uh, provider initiated information will be automatically popped up based on the formula because uh, yes. Then uh, you also need to mention the death. If any HIV positive death occurred excluding pregnant woman then you can mention over here number of uh, male female or TG death occurred who having the HIV infection we have added the information regarding the FISTC referral for the HIV confirmation it was there in the section D format for the pregnant woman we also incorporated for the general client also because some of the general clients were tested at the FISTC level and being referred at the standard STC level for the confirmation so we need to have the information regarding the confirmation of those cases so you need to mention how many general individuals referred for the confirmation then how many found confirmed positive then how many confirmed negative out of referred suppose 100 clients are referred for the confirmation then how many confirmed positive how many confirmed negative we need to mention that then spouse details it was there earlier uh, we know that we have added uh, two extra indicators, these highlighted indicators. See, the number of sexual partners tested for HIV, then number diagnosed with the three test, then number of sexual partners of negative individuals tested for HIV, number diagnosed with HIV. Then we are asking about the cases who are already been tested for HIV because we have seen there is a uh, gap in the spouse testing seen in the SIMS data. To rule out that, uh, we try to incorporate the indicator regarding those cases who are already been tested and did not require the HIV testing. Like number of spouse partners of HIV positive individual who are already who already know their HIV status and did not require HIV testing. 
number of spouse partners of HIV negative individuals who already know their HIV status and did not require HIV testing. So you need to mention the number of those cases. So age-wise bifurcation in the age-wise table, uh, as per the WHO suggestion, we have added the categories of the earlier we have the category less than 14 age only, but with the newer format, uh, we further bifurcated with the 18 to 5 years, 18 months to 5 years, 6 to 9 years, and 10 to 14 years, and 15 to 19 years. Uh, these two groups to capture the adolescent details, these two details for the children. Then root of transmission table is as it is. We have tried to simplify it. So this is all about the uh, section B. Then in the section C, which is about the kit, we also tried to minimize the section C. So equals information, which is being captured quarterly, which is moved to the quarterly reporting format, which is a major ch change for the section C. So in the section C, we are asking the number of blood specimen tested for HIV. Then having type 2 infection, type 1 infection and type uh, mixed infection, HIV 1 and 2 infection. Uh, then we are asking about the stock. So stock of HIV kit 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, for which is a, a whole word finger pick test. Then syphilis test kit stock provided by, supplied by SACS. Then DBS cart, nevirapine syrup, judovidin syrup, lopinavir syrup, TLE and safe delivery kit. We know that TLE stock we are maintaining the TLE for the labor ward, so all those stock will be maintained by the standard ICTC, which is supplied to the labor ward. Then uh, we also try to incorporate the information regarding the outreach activity carried out by the counselors. So number of APICTC is linked to the standard ICTC. First, we should know that how many uh, facilities are being linked to the standard ICTC for the monitoring. Then number of APICTCs including TISTCs visited during this month because during the outreach activity you are going to visit those screening facilities only. Also number of capacity building workshops conducted by the APICTC sorry number of capacity building workshops capacity building workshops conducted for the APICTC and the labor ward then number of outreach activities conducted for the social awareness camp like IC workshop then number of home visits conducted for the HIV positive general individual, number of home visits for the HIV positive pregnant women. So all those information will be maintained in the outreach activity table. Then in section D, we also tried to minimize the section D. Earlier we were asking this bifurcation of ANC DIL for all indicators, but we stick it to the tested and positive cases only. So for all remaining indicators, you will not find this bifurcation. This bifurcation is for only two, three indicators, four indicators available over here. That means number of ANC opioid registration tested for HIV and diagnosed with HIV. Here major addition is breast feeding cases. Earlier format it is not there, but the, with the newer format, we have added the breast feeding cases reporting also. Same for the indicator number 4D. This indicator we have already incorporated in the previous years and we are reporting it properly. So already known HIV positive cases detected earlier from the same ICTC or the other ICTC who are currently pregnant and registered for the ANC services during this month. So you need to mention that number and it will be very minimal. Most of the time it is null only, nothing. Then uh, see, uh, we are asking about the number of cases reported in PALS, then number of cases receiving post-test counseling, yeah, it's, these are all, all those indicators are common, which were already there. Type of infection we have added. Then FISTC referral, as I discussed with you. So screen reactive individuals will be referred from the FISTC for the confirmation. So we need to mention the number of screen reactive individuals referred for the confirmation. Number confirmed positive and number diagnosed, confirmed negative. Uh, in the section D format, uh, we have added the information pertaining to the gravida wise distribution because in earlier format we were not capturing the how many cases were primary gravida and the multiple gravida. So to capture that information uh, we added that table. So number of cases with primary gravida and multi gravida. Multi gravida may be second, third, fourth. <coughs> so we can club all those information in the multi gravida part. Then delivery information 
which is a common table uh, in the sims format we try to generate these three indicators automatically so wherever the sales are highlighted all those indicators will be automatically generated so we are working on that and we will uh, ensure the auto generation of those three indicators so that uh, mistakes will be uh, ruled out so you need to mention the outcome of pregnancy if prophylaxis of the baby and the if mother is initiated on ert you need to mention the number same eid follow up table is okay it was there already uh, we have removed the second visit third visit details just we have mentioned the follow up visit so but you need to mention the details properly for the first visit that means how many cases uh, visited in the first 6 uh, uh, week to 6 month and 6 month to 18 months so in that uh, we are asking about the number of children visited the center during this month i'll increase the percentage so that you can see okay so number of children visited during this month number of children initiated on cpt number of children tested for hiv under the eid program number of children who found positive by first pcr hiv one pcr during this month number of children who confirmed positive by confirmed hiv one pcr number of hiv positive children registered at the ert center we are also asking about the number of children died during this month that means before 18 month number of children died we need to mention over here this was not there earlier format in the earlier format uh, 18 month details are same as it is so no need to discuss again ha huh. uh, we have done the changes in the section e regarding hiv tb cross referrals so in the earlier format we were capturing the cross referrals for the hiv positive general individuals only but with this format we are also capturing the details for the pregnant women also see so how many preg hiv positive pregnant women refer to the rntcp how many hiv negative pregnant women refer to the rntcp for rntcp for the tb diagnosis so we need to mention all those things we have also incorporated the details regarding the in referral from the rntcp so in the older format it was removed but again it is incorporated in the newer format and will be maintained properly so i am not going to discuss these indicators separately again so because you are uh, you all are well versed with this ha huh. so as i told you a uh, quarterly format has been built for the standalone stcs and it requires uh, standalone stc will maintain this quarterly reporting format because equas information is being captured quarterly so we have added this equas information in the quarterly format itself also we have added the social protection schemes in the quarterly basis so, so whatever type of schemes you have provided to the individuals you can mention those numbers over here so type of scheme and the number of individuals provided those services you need to mention over here then for the self initiated individuals number of cases who reported as a client initiated or the self initiated we need to mention the bifurcation of those cases from where they got that information for the hiv testing for the self initiated individuals so from tv radio newspaper internet holdings like that so you can ask them because this information we are capturing in the register also so based on that information we can mention the details regarding the source of the hiv source of the information about hiv testing then we also added see uh, from the section b we have removed that occupation and the uh, linkages referral table which is incorporated in the quarterly format so it will be uh, compiled quarterly only so we need to mention the occupation of the cases in the quarterly format so all those indicators are same we try to simplify the table only tested and the positive bus that much is okay for the uh, occupation details as like same for the linkages referral table so number of cases in referral tested that means from ti non ti ngo obs gynae guarantee cp blood bank refer for the chair testing and in referral diagnosed and refer to the ert center so all those information will be maintained in the this quarterly format so quarterly format is newly developed for the standalone stcs then uh, we are having 5 10 minutes lab report form we are not going to discuss in detail lab report form because which is common uh, we are already maintaining this so this is a lab test report form which is handed over to the individual ha huh. 
addition is the daily worksheet for the lab technician so lab technician need to mention this maintain this daily worksheet which is available in the facility which is available in the guideline also so, so every day you need to mention the pid so whoever is tested for the first uh, screening test you need to mention the pid number over here okay if anybody found positive you can mention the pid over here who found positive and undergone the second test and third test this will use the documentation in the lab register then dashboard indicators yeah so this is the dashboard for the standalone ICTC and which should be maintained by the ICTC counselor and the lab technician which will be displayed at the standalone ICTC so for every month you have to update you can make it in the blackboard or any uh, uh, large size uh, large size uh, fold, uh, poster also you can make it like that and every month you should update this dashboard of your ICTC so all major indicators we have incorporated related to the general individuals and the pregnant women so you can update this dashboard every month other NHS are available in the guideline you can refer those NHS available in the guideline we have discussed earlier okay fine so we have finished with the uh, register format cards forms reports and any other NHS because we are not going to discuss this uh, NHS separately uh, see uh, in the other part uh, we have given the contact numbers of the all officials contact numbers of the BSN ACO officials contact numbers of the uh, SACS officials and contact details of the PPCT consultant also so you can uh, refer these details for any perusal well okay now quickly we will go through the questions raised by the field there are a few questions from the different ICTCs or ERT centers so ERT Yadgir is writing about the uh, mother card number that means MCTS number screen sharing off screen sharing So you can write the questions uh, in the comment box, uh, comment box, so that we can go through it and uh, help. Uh, MCTS number can be taken from the ANC card. If it is not available, then you can uh, keep it blank. But you should ask for the MCTS number, which is uh, because whenever the ANC card is being issued to the uh, pregnant woman that the MCTS number is being written on the NC card so that you can refer that card because it is necessary whenever any case is uh, reaching to the ICTC and we are following that case for the uh, delivery if, is, if it is uh, lost to follow for the delivery you can track that case to the MCTS number also in the RCS system Pravinji. Thank you Tejas for this informative session. Uh, all the participants are requested to kindly enter the e-poll which is going to display on the screen shortly.